The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving love. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. The first reading is taken from the book of Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I'm Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. And he said, I'm your brother Joseph, whom you sold into slavery. Now, do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve your life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there will be five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it is not you who sent me, but God. He has, he has made me a father to Pharaoh, the lord of all his house, and the ruler over all Egypt. Now hurry, go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, and you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And then he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our song uh, for today, you will read responsibly. I'll read to the asterisks. I invite you to complete each verse. I do, do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not fret yourself. For they shall soon wither like the grass. And like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and be not riches. Take delight in the Lord. And he shall renew your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him. And he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light. And your just feelings as the light. Be still before the Lord. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not fret yourselves, it leads only to evil. For evildoers shall be cut off. For those who wait on the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while, the wicked shall be no more. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow to strike down the poor and needy. To slaughter those who are upright in their ways. The second reading is from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. But some will ask, how are the dead raised? What kind of body do they for, with what kind of body do they come, you fool? What you sow does not come to life unless it dies. As for you who sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable, what is raised is imperishable. It is sown in the dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. 
It has sown a physical body. It has raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, then there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, The first man, Adam, became a living being, but the last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of dust. And this, and as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our graduate hymn this morning is number 506, Lord of All Hopefulness. Children of the Most High, 
for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For measure, the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I have a book at home that I was given. It's actually quite a beautiful uh, book. And it's about uh, uh, art, specifically art in the church, uh, all the way back to the Renaissance and, and all the way forward, and some pieces that are even earlier than that. And uh, it, it, what I found fascinating was I, I wasn't the subject I was really interested in. Uh, someone, like I said, gave it to me as a gift, one of those big, thick books, beautiful pictures. And then I started to read through it, and uh, I became interested in the subject because it was actually fascinating. We have to remember now the literacy rate is extremely high and has been for the last couple of generations, but it wasn't too long ago in our collective history that the average person couldn't read or write. And that's why you had so much symbolic. If you, uh, you, know, if you come from uh, England or, or Great Britain, I should say, or have ever visited, you, you'll see this still in the towns, you know, and they'll call it the sign of the red line, and then there's a picture of a red Line. Why? Because you could tell that to people on the street who couldn't read. They'd look for the picture. And you know this one? Pawn shops? What's the, what's the symbol for a pawn shop? You'll still see it sometimes. Three balls. Three balls. Yeah, a little boom, boom, boom. Three. Basically, it means you can give away your stuff <laughs> for a little bit of cash. So in the art of the time, you had the symbols so that people could pick out exactly who you were looking at. If we look up at our stained glass windows, we still carry it on today. On the left, we have St. Thomas, our saint. St. Thomas usually has one of two things in his hands. He'll always have a scroll. And sometimes on that scroll that you see here is in his right hand, it'll, it'll say, my Lord and my God, written in Greek or Latin sometimes. And that's, you'll remember when he was doubting, and then Jesus appeared to him, and he realized it was the risen Christ before him, and he said, my Lord and my God. And that's often written on that scroll. And then in his other hand, he'll have a spear, which is the way he was martyred, or here, the sign of a builder or an architect. And that's how you, you see a saint, you can, you can pick out who that saint is. On the other side, this is the easiest saint to pick out. St. Patrick, if you see a, 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 a clover in his hand, in, in his hand. Uh, I was going to say four-leaf clover, but that's Lucky Charms. Um, you know, this is the, the patron saint of Ireland, of course. Uh, most people don't know this, though, that, that uh, what's glorious about that story is as a young teenager, pirates came, he lived on the coast of England, possibly Wales. He was abducted, he was taken into slavery, and uh, was forced to uh, be in the fields night and day with, with sheep. Until finally he got back to the coast, he paid for his passage, he got back home, and he was plagued by dreams, not plagued, but he had dreams night after night after night that the people of Ireland were crying out for salvation. And so he went back to the very people who had enslaved him to help free them with the gospel, and he preached there for the rest of his life. And of course, Christ in the middle with the crown, because we always remember, first and last, Christ is king as well. So you go on and on. The one I wanted to key in on today, because it, it comes into our passages here, is if you see symbols of Mary, what color usually is associated with Mary in our, in our art? Blue. blue, blue. What most people don't notice is that she's often barefoot, and does anyone know what animal is pictured under her foot? Serpent. Look for it next time you see pictures of Mary. Crushing a serpent's head under her heel. Why? Well, you'll see it here. This is, uh, this is fabulous in, in Corinthians because Paul really goes into it here. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. Jesus was often referred to as the second Adam. Why? Because the first Adam was fully human and, and failed. Doomed to fail, really, because of our flawed nature. Doomed to fail by who? 
the temptation represented by the serpent in the garden. Mary's offspring, Jesus, fully human but also fully divine, the Christ, the Redeemer. Mary is seen crushing the serpent because the one who is to come into the world through her will destroy sin and death. And it's always good to remember these things. And Paul is reminding um, the people of Corinth about these things. He writes on, the last Adam became a life-giving spirit, but it is not the spiritual that is first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. This is our lot in life. This, and this is, the, well, I, I, I've talked about this tension that we live in all the time. We have to live in this world. We have to eat. We have to drink. We have to sleep. And if we live in a society, there's, there's rules and laws we have to obey. But we always have to remember that our greater allegiance is always to God. And our eternal life. So that's what he means by here. Yes, the first, the physical comes first, then the spiritual. The first man from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven, Christ. As was the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust, us. And as is the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So, I'm going to put this really bluntly. This is a tension, once again, that we have in the church. No matter how much work you do, if you do not have faith and you do not have love in your heart, you have nothing. 1 Corinthians 13. You have nothing. You can't earn your way there. You can't climb the mountain spring up behind God and surprise the Lord. We do the things that we do out of love for other people because of our faith. But the idea that somehow people earn their way is actually not true. Was it that bad? It was that bad. <laughs> See, all right? Here we go. And I'm uh, just going to finish this up. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Once again, it's this, it's this attempt to refocus us away from the world in which we, we have to live, knowing that we are doomed to fail in our best enterprises, which we try every day we get up. That's, that's our daily bread. We ask for God's blessings for the day, to go through the day as Christ-like beings, Knowing, but knowing it's okay that we fail. Why is it okay? Because we have a Redeemer. But then eventually we will be redeemed. And the imperfect will be made perfect. Through, through Jesus Christ. And we're given... Uh, even now when you read this, it's incredibly challenging. But I, I can't imagine when people first heard these words, what they must have thought. I say to you, love your enemies and be good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. Now, we're not talking about staying in situations that are abusive. You are to take care of yourself. You need to get away from people who physically and emotionally abuse you. That's not what's being spoken about here. This is if you are abused because of your faith. If you are persecuted because of your faith. Pray for those who are doing it. They don't know what they're doing. And I will strengthen you through that. Once again, I can't stress this enough. It's bad theology to say that people should stay in relationships where they're being abused. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying you are blessed if you are being persecuted for your faith. I heard a great saying last week, and I, 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 it's one of those ones I wish I had thought of, right? It's a, it's a military uh, illusion, right? It said, the flak is heaviest over the target. It's absolutely true. If you, are, if you are faithful and you are on track, there are some who will give you the greatest grief. Woe to you when everybody loves you and no one has a problem with you. Think about that. You know how you have nobody have a problem with you? Just agree to everybody who's in the room. And then when you leave the room, everyone in that room will have utter contempt for you. 
You know you're on, you know you're right when there are some who will attack you for what you believe. And we don't say to them, ah, just wait till you die. I hope you're buried in asbestos underwear, pal. <laughs> That's not what we're supposed to think or do. We're to pray for those people. We're to pray to those people. I, and and, and I, don't, I don't say this in some sort of high and mighty, I feel bad. I feel bad. Where are you in your head when you're attacking other people for what they believe? Especially when our Savior says things like, love your neighbors, pray for those who hate you, be good to people who curse you. These are wondrous words, but incredibly challenging. This time that these words, these were times of blood feud. That was, the Jewish law was meant to end that. You know, don't, if somebody accidentally kills one of your kids, it, it still, in some parts of the world today, you had to redress that loss of honor, that insult, that injury. Kill one of their, or one of their other relatives. It would go back and forth. You know, we joke about the Hat, Hatfields and the McCoys. This was much, much, much worse. This put an end to it. Can't do that anymore. Instead, instead of not even striking back, somebody steals your cloak, give them your shirt. If they slap you on your face, which I, I can't stress enough, at this time, even in our own history in the West, incredible insult. You had to respond to that. Somebody slaps you in the face, you don't say or do anything. People are like, why don't you punch that guy? No, turn the other cheek as well. Be Better than your animal spirit is telling you to be. Rise above. It, it, I'm sorry. These words are just awesome. Um, give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Put out, I mean, this is today's language, but put out into the world what you want the world to give. If you picture that perfect world in your mind, that Christ-like world where the, the lion and the lamb lay down, people beat their weapons into plowshares, then you be that. You be that. People will see it and say, man, I love being around. You ever met those people as Christians you just love to be around? Just have them in the room? Feels like you've thrown the window open. Be that. It's not easy. I mean, <laughs> there's no formula to it. It's not easy. But we're called, every day you wake up, you're called to be that, and you're being strengthened in that direction. You'll be made perfect after your death. But in the meantime, we're called upon every single day to make that our goal. Perfection. Through Jesus Christ. Um, and I'm going to leave you with this just because I have to throw this in. I love this. But I'm going to look at the, uh, the gospel here. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For me the measure you give will be the measure you get back. Anybody love Shakespeare? Measure for measure? Yeah. That's where that comes from. Once again, be the change that you want to see in the world. Have the faith that you want to see the rest of the world have. Do not respond in kind, but always respond with Christ's voice. And that little bit will be that little bit closer to the kingdom of God. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord for a day of fulfillment and peace thinking especially of the situation downtown where it seems to be settling, but also our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to teach us to love others as he has loved us. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord for peace and justice in the world. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to strengthen and relieve those who are in need. Lord, have mercy. 
Let us ask the Lord to renew the church through the power of his life-giving spirit. Lord, have mercy. Let us, this week in our parish, we pray for Linda Baumgart, Roy and Eleanor Baumgart, Laura Garl, and Jamie, Avery, Emmett, and Grace Bell, Nancy Dew, Warren, and Audrey Blackburn. We pray also for the sick and those in kneeling, in need of healing, sorry. Richard, Rod, Rita, Diana, Craig, Judy, Kevin, Bernie, Gloria, Audrey, and, and Her Majesty the Queen. We pray for the greater world community, for all those who are suffering. Lord, have mercy. My dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and he is infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you all. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you.
Lead us to love, love you with all our heart and to love all people with your perfect love. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross, that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. And now, with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you to please be seated or to kneel. Remain standing if you wish for the prayer of consecration. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who, on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took a cup, saying, This is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of the holy, your holy church, gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior Christ has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's so easy, I should just read it off of there. <laughs> we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Just a reminder to all of you, especially any guests we have here today, all baptized Christians, regardless of your home church or your denomination, are welcome to receive the Eucharist here at St. Thomas. It's Christ who is the head of this table, and Christ who wishes to encounter all of us in the breaking of bread and the sharing of wine. Standing, let us pray. Gracious God, in the Eucharist, we celebrate your love for us and for all people. Grant that, strengthened by these holy gifts, we may show your love in our lives and know its fulfillment in your presence. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen.
As you go forth into the world today, may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may they see Christ's face in you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for our announcement. Good morning, everybody. Nice to see you here. And uh, to those at home on the video recorder, welcome. Um, just to remind you that all our services are on, uh, are still online, and uh, that's why we're taping them. And uh, you can catch any of the services, God's Garden, uh, anything that we do at the church online. So if you just go to St. Thomas, uh, Stitzville at gmail.com. Everything is there, so you can pick it up. Um, God's Garden is online weekly, and it is also live here at the church. And uh, the activities and crafts are uh, online, so you can pick those up. But also, Mary Lee has them ready for you here at the church. And uh, so if you need any help with that, you can always call the church office. Now, very important, our annual vestry meeting. It is next Sunday, February 27th, at 11.30. We moved it for half an hour because uh, we had to get home from church and be able to get online because it is going to be done by Zoom. So if you, um, if you have Zoom and you want to do the vote, which we hope every parishioner here at St. Thomas does, you have to call in and uh, get registered because all the voting counts and it has to be done in a formal manner. So please make sure for people here and at home that um, Nicole sent out a, um, a message yesterday and you have to be able to register before you can vote. So that's really important. That's next. Sunday at 11.30, okay? And um, the People's Pulpit, um, articles are due on the 23rd of February, and Mary Ann sure will be able to use um, some articles this month. So anything, if you uh, have anything you want to share at all, it would be so nice, or write a little poem, or if you saw a little joke or something, please send it in because uh, she does such a wonderful job, but it's nice that she has uh, some content to put in. Um, our online church services, as I said, can be always found at stthomasstitzville.ca. So, uh, and the talent show that we had, which was virtual, you can go there and you can uh, pick up that talent show also. Now on Tuesday night at seven o'clock, uh, you'll remember that I sent out a letter from uh, the diocese, which we have questions we need to answer as a parish. And at 7 o'clock on Zoom, um, the Congregational can meet and we can discuss that questionnaire, or at least part of it, to get it going. And um, so if you uh, want to participate in that, just watch your emails, because my friend Dave Hazen is going to uh, get us hooked up to Zoom, and uh, we'll see each other on at 7 o'clock next Tuesday, uh, this coming Tuesday night. And you can participate as much as you wish at that time. Thank you.